Hey everybody and welcome to Dominion Cards, the video series where we take a strategic, in-depth look at various cards from the board game Dominion. Today we're looking at Contraband. This is a 5 cost treasure from Prosperity and it says plus 3 coins, plus 1 buy. The player to your left names a card, you can't buy that card this turn. So at first glance, Contraband looks like a cheaper gold with a plus buy on it, but your opponent gets to restrict what cards you are allowed to buy. Now in Dominion you actually play treasures one at a time, and you get to choose the order that you play them. When people start like playing the base game physically, this is sometimes lost, like people get into the habit of just like flashing their hand to say, oh, and then I've got like three coppers for three money. But in reality, you should be playing them one at a time on the table. And so just like any other card, you know, one at a time and follow the instructions and resolve the card completely first before you play anything else. So what you should do with contraband is you should always play it first during your buy phase in order to give away less information to your opponents on how much money you actually have to spend. This is one of the few cards where actually keeping your hand secret is actually really important. Like for a lot of other cards, it doesn't really matter, but for contraband, it really does. Now, you should always assume that your opponent will be playing optimally and not to rely on the fact that they might make mistakes and that's what we're going to be doing for this video. Like, I would be assessing the card basically under the assumption that your opponent is always going to be blocking the best card for your deck at any given time, and therefore you won't actually be able to purchase the best thing for you. It's worth noting that contraband stacks very poorly, so during your buy phase, you must first play all the treasures you want to before you're allowed to buy anything. As soon as you've bought a card, you aren't allowed to play any more treasures. Again, this is something that might be lost on new players because it never really mattered up until Prosperity. Uh, but yes, you, um, you... Well, I guess technically it would matter for like Philosopher's Stone, but yeah. Um, you have to play the treasures first. And what that means is that if you want to play multiple contrabands, you have to play them all first before you're allowed to buy anything. What that means is that your opponent gets to block you from multiple different cards before you get the chance to buy any. It's not like you get to play contraband, then block a card, you buy one, then you play another contraband, maybe they block that card you just bought, and then you go and you buy something else. No, they get to block two things in that case before you're allowed to make any purchases. What that means is that you very, very rarely ever get more than one contraband in the event that you actually do get one because you get absolutely wrecked on being able to buy the things you want if you were playing multiple contrabands. But being blocked from buying any two cards is very, very harsh. So contrabands, pretty much its only value is the fact that it gives you plus one buy. Um, but it is the absolute worst source of plus buy in the entire game. I can't remember if I said that about Herbalist, but it's not true because I just forget that Contraband even exists because that's how bad it is. This is the worst buy. If there is literally any other source of plus buy, you ignore Contraband unless it has some other value outside of its on-play text, like Keep, for example, or Museum, you know... Um, you can't even consider this a real source of plus buy most of the time. Now, what do I mean by that? So one of the big things with plus buy is that it really helps you to get up to, like, double province turns, right? The most powerful victory cards are very expensive, and usually the only way you get them is that you have to buy them. So you need plus buy to get more than one per turn. But the thing with contraband is that there's no restriction on what card exactly they can name. So they can just start naming provinces or colonies, and then that means you can't buy them anymore. So you can't really use contraband as a way to get up to double province or double colony turns or whatever, because you just won't be allowed to buy them anymore. So, yeah, you, you can't play this card as soon as you want to start buying like provinces or colonies. So it's not helping you like improve the total output of your engine for the end game. So yeah, so you have to stop buying contraband when it's time to start buying victory points, or you have to resort for um like going for two duchies over a province. This is actually a pretty bad deal 
And oftentimes this is going to be worse than just not playing contraband at all. So contraband tends to have a limited lifespan. You just you just got to stop playing it after a certain point. Now you might say, okay, if I'm assuming that contraband isn't allowed to get me to like double province turns, then maybe I want to think of it more like a workshop type card, right? I get it in the early game and I use it to pick up multiple copies of cheap cards. But bear in mind that even then, it's pretty unfavorable to very various workshop variants. So consider, for example, Ironworks from Intrigue, which is like a non-terminal workshop. This is more expensive. It costs five than that. Uh, it doesn't actually get you the best card that you wanted. If you wanted like a village desperately, then your opponent can name village, and now you can't get that with Contraband. Uh, this is only sort of giving you three value rather than four. So obviously like, workshops don't actually give you money, but if you think about just directly gaining a four-cost card, that's kind of like having four money and a buy. I mean, in a lot of situations it's not, but you can sort of think of, think of situations where that is kind of equivalent. So this is getting you like less output than a workshop would in that case. Uh, you can't play this beyond a certain point, which, you know, you can always be playing your iron works, right? There's nothing stopping you from doing that. And this can also restrict you from buying five cost cards or more expensive ones as, as well. And that might be a problem because you might be reliant on buying some five cost cards. Like maybe the only village is festival or all the draw cards cost five, right? Contraband can lock you out of getting them as well. Something that isn't going to happen with like a workshop. So contraband only really works to help you get more engine components if you have multiple viable alternatives available. So they can't like completely shut you out from one particular type of card. So you might need like two village piles and two sets of terminal draw piles in order to be able to safely play this. Because if you've only got one of those two things, then your opponent can just name that thing that there's only one of. Like maybe there's only one draw card in the game. So just name the draw card every turn. And if you keep playing contraband, you can't buy any anymore. You just can't get them added to your deck Like if you've got to buy them. So you really need a lot of alternatives for contraband to be viable. Now, there are certain things that help make contraband better, which we're going to be going through now. So one of them is cost-relevant trashing. So if you think that contraband is not actually able to pick up the cards that you most ideally want, then you're going to get cards that aren't necessarily that great in your deck. Well, if you have cards that can trash that junk for extra value, then suddenly you're getting a lot more out of it. So for example... You know, cards like Upgrade, if they're blocking you from getting some five-cost card that you really want, like a draw card, maybe you could gain any old four-cost and then you could turn it into that five-cost through the next shuffle. That's not brilliant, but, you know, it is possible, and then you can actually start getting multiple cards added to your deck per turn. Um, there is also, of note, um, Expand and Butcher. These are important remodel variants because they get to turn Contraband, which is a five-cost card, into a province at the end of the game. So Expand can directly... It's like a more powerful remodel. Butcher, you might be able to save a coffer and upgrade it to a province. So that's a really good value. Five is a little bit awkward normally for remodelers, but those two do with it quite well. And of course, Forge, which lets you gain a lot of four-cost cards and smash them together into provinces late game. These are just some examples. You know, there's lots of cost-relevant trashes in the game. In some situations, you may find there is another victory pile that is good enough to compete with province. And in that case, it sort of doesn't really matter which one your opponent blocks because you're able to pick up two copies of the other one, at least until one of those piles is empty. So castles can sometimes be thought of as not quite, but almost another province pile in the game. So if your opponent's blocking you from provinces, you can pick up two castles. And if they stop you from castles, you can pick up two provinces instead, if you've got enough money. Distant lands... Yeah, it only gives you four each, but if you get two of them, that's eight, and they sort of disappear from your deck. So if you think that you, your opponent who isn't going for contraband can like only gain single province turns, you might be able to get eight money per turn with distant lands, and you'll be ahead. And of course, vineyard can sometimes be worth a lot of points. Now, if it's a contraband game, 
maybe you can't get that many actions very quickly, but maybe there is like a workshop in there as well. And so you buy contraband, hoping to either double province or double vineyard, and then maybe you actually can get a lot of points, right? Maybe there's um, university or something in the game, right? It is, it is possible. One thing to note is that contraband, you can only name cards. And events, for all purposes of game rules, do not count as cards. So you can't name them. That means they can't be blocked. And some events let you score really well. So Alliance and Dominate are like two very point, uh, notable, like point gaining events. So in this case, you don't have to stop playing Contraband because they can't block you from these. And these are sometimes your primary source of points when they're available. So in that case, Contraband... You know, you are able to still play it to buy and maybe a, an engine component, or you can use the three money to contribute towards these cards instead. So in summary, there's not too much to say about Contraband. It's like a bottom 10 card out of all the cards. This card's really, really bad. Uh, it's harmful to get multiple copies, which isn't really what you want for a buy card. Um, it's ignored most of the time because it's terrible. And if there's any other source of plus buy, you're just not buying contraband. It can sabotage you in the end game by having you blocked from buying provinces. So it's only useful up to a certain point. So when you do get use cases for it, they tend to be very, very rare. You need multiple options for the stuff that you want to buy so that you're not reliant on your best option. And, you know, there's so much that needs to go. And honestly, it's quite expensive for what it does. Like even gold for three coin treasure. Do you even want that on five? Like you don't want to buy gold for six a lot of the time, but you still buy other things even if gold cost five, right? So it's just it's just very poor. This is a terrible card, quite frankly. And if you never buy it, then very rarely will your game actually be impacted by that, right? I almost never buy contraband, and I don't miss it by not buying it because it's just awful. So that's all for contraband. There's not much to say because, you, quite frankly, you're just never going to buy it. So what we're going to do now is we're going to move over to the online client and generate some random kingdoms that involve contraband. And we're going to see how terrible it is. Well, here's possession. So <laughs> interestingly, if you possess an opponent who has contraband, you get to pick what you're blocking yourself from buying. And so it's actually really, really good for the possessor to have contraband in your in your deck because they don't get harmed by it because they control what is blocked. So they'll just block like curse or something. Um, and there's festival and wharf on this board. So there's so many buys, uh, just ridiculous amounts of plus buy here. So you're clearly never getting contraband, right? Like... Uh, yeah, you iron works for vassals and caravans and monuments and remodels, and you buy festivals and wharves, and you just get a lot of money through playing a lot of monuments and festivals, I guess, and draw with wharf. And that's good because possession player doesn't want to give you points by playing all your monuments, I guess. Um, yeah, so contraband absolutely worthless here. We're not going to go too much over this kingdom because we've already assessed that contraband is awful you're not even going to bother with remodel to try and make it better um, you just don't need it here we have i noticed straight away we have torturer um there is there no village there is diplomat as the only village that's very awkward because there's no real way to get your hand size down in order to play it unless your opponent attacks you and to be fair there are four attack cards on this board but uh, I don't think you use that to kick off a torturer engine. Like, the problem is, is that there's no other real trashing. There's replace, but it's not very good. So what do you do instead? Like, I would say harems and horde, but I mean, there is bandit and there is pirate ship, which might actually be a decent pirate ship board. Uh, you're clearly never going philosopher's stone. Um, what do you actually do here? This is quite interesting. Oh yeah, if your opponent does try to do a torture thing, you've got like Watchtower for defense against the curses. So I really don't think you build the torture deck. It's too difficult. If your opponent starts buying diplomats, you just stop playing attack cards and then their deck is terrible, right? So um, that is interesting. Man, because the diplomat and the attacks... 
So something notable here, by the way, is that contraband is the only plus buy. But the big problem is, is that you don't want anything. Right? There's nothing to do in this kingdom. Um, so you definitely, you're just not buying it. And there's no real draw. Like, it's very difficult to draw your deck here. The only draw is like Torture and Watchtower, and the only village being Diplomat sort of undoes the value from Watchtower. Like, Watchtower's not very good if Diplomat's the only village. Like, Torture is fine, but it's very difficult to play multiple because Diplomat gets turned off as a village when you draw a lot with Torturer. So... What are you even doing? I guess you can just play Bandit a bunch, and that might shut down Harems a bit. And maybe it's hard to go for Hordes because Bandit trashes all these. There's like four special treasures, and there's Bandit, and there's Pirate Ship, and there's no engine. Like, this is shocking, Lord. This is... <laughs> oh, man. Um... Wow, what do you do? Like, you have to go, like, big money, but then there's Pirate Ship and Bandit. Like, yikes. <laughs> and all of your big money support are treasure cards. Like, <laughs> Oh, dear. Uh, well, I don't really know what to do here, but I do know one thing. You're not buying Contraband, and quite frankly, you're not buying Philosopher's Stone either. Um, and that's about it, really. If your opponent does get Potion, you just, like, start pirate shipping them like crazy, trash all of their coppers, and then they don't get any use out of Philosopher's Stone, right? So, like, it's impossible to do that. Oh, Potion, there's another special treasure card. So there's, like, five treasure cards that are unusual here. So, yeah, anyway, Contraband is a no-go here. It's just a disaster card. Um, and who knows what else you do. To be honest, I don't care what else you do there, because that's just... It's just not Contraband. We've got Colony and Platinum on this one. And we have... Um, well, there's Grand Market is another source of plus buy straight away. So Contraband is useless in the um, in the face of Grand Market. Let's be realistic here. We've got Moneylender as trashing to get rid of all of our coppers. We've got Quarry. So buying Grand Market is pretty easy. Um, there's also Remodel, Caravan, Vassal, Swindler, Warehouse... You've got a reasonable engine here. You can actually do a vassal thing with grand markets. If the only terminal is like at one point moneylender and then eventually you swap to like swindler, you're fairly safe playing vassals, honestly, if you can get a bunch of grand markets. So that's what we're going to try and do. And then you can like... You could swap over to vineyard, but there's also colony, which honestly is probably quicker than going for vineyard. Um... I mean, with Quarry, though, and Grand Market, you can buy a lot of cards very quickly. And, I mean, maybe you just get a potion anyway, and then you just buy vineyards as well as colonies. Like, I can see that happening. But you kind of sort of want every card here except Contraband, and maybe you don't bother with Remodel. But I can see you buying everything else. Um, it's a Grand Market is your primary good payload here. The, your deck's very good. Grand Market plus Vassal with Quarry making these cards incredibly cheap, like Grand Market gives you a ton of buys, and you really don't want Contraband at all. I want all my buys from Grand Market, absolutely. Um, yeah, so uh, this is a decent deck. The only draw is Caravan, which is bad, but it doesn't really matter because this is more of a cantrip kingdom, essentially, and Warehouse helps you push past like any junk. Even though it reduces your hand size, it doesn't really matter that much. So, yeah, very strong, and you're never buying contraband. Grand Market completely blows it out of the water. So, yep, yeah, I'm expecting contraband will not be used in any of these. This probably isn't actually going to be that interesting in hindsight. Um, so we've got Grand Market again for plus buy. We've got Lurker, so it's really easy to get Grand Markets. And we can also get Nobles with Lurker, so Lurker's very strong here. We have Tactician. So we can use Grand Markets and the Bazaars to go for a double Tactician deck. Well, that's incredible. We've got Moneylender and Apprentice for trashing that are really good together. Apprentice is bad at getting rid of the Coppers, and Moneylender only gets rid of the Coppers. So that's really nice. And yeah, um, there is Replace, which, to be fair, can actually turn your Nobles and Grand Markets into Provinces late game if you need to. So that's really good as well. And the curses are not great to get rid of, like you have to apprentice them. So that's good. 
So we're going for everything here except for contraband and, I don't know, do we get pearl divers? Yeah, right, probably not. It's not really doing anything, but if I had a spare two, well, I'd probably want a lurker instead. I don't know. Um, the draw is actually great, sorry, excuse me, because there is tactician and nobles and bizarre. Like, the, the draws are exceptional. So, yeah, this is a pretty crazy board. It's actually going to suddenly end very quickly because Grand Market is going to drain provinces alongside replace. And you lurk like nobles and then you replace them into province. So just, yeah, incredible. Contraband, absolutely dire here. Um, to be fair, there are a lot of other cards that you can get with it. Like maybe you buy like an extra lurker, but why wouldn't you just buy lurker instead of contraband and just like gain more cards directly that way like anyway contraband's useless here basically very poor i would rather be buying when i get five bazaars an apprentice or replace or tactician or like any one of those really good cards and i'm not buying contraband at all so this is bad here like grand market is very good to buy and our last kingdom of the day so we have Worker's Village for plus buy. Oh, and we've got Bridge as well, and Baron. So there's lots of sources of plus buy. So why would we ever buy Contraband? Big problem with this kingdom is that there's Mountebank. So although we have Village with Worker's Village, we've got Bridges, we've got Draw with Courtyard, we've got Trading Post to Trash. This isn't good enough under a Mountebank Onslaught. So we sort of just can't get the Bridge engine going because we just get buried completely, and the trashing is not good enough to deal with that. Now, if we can't build the engine, then drawing is difficult. There is only, like, courtyard, and so we're not really going to be making that much use out of plus buy. Um, so what do we do? For some reason, I eyed up bureaucrat, but that's actually really bad. Um, if we're getting drowned with Mountebank, like we don't even care for the Silvers and we're not really going to hit our opponent that much with it. But, you know, it does actually get you some Silvers in the early game. Maybe that's fine. Is this board so bad that I'm actually considering Bureaucrat? What I really want to be doing is playing Mountebank a lot and I'm going to have a bunch of warehouses and we're just going to cycle even though my deck is bad quite early to get at Mountebanks and maybe I have some courtyards. Once that's done... Honestly, merchant ship is not terrible here. When I've got a terrible deck that's been destroyed by Mountebank, I'm actually fine with merchant ship. I do want that little bit of extra money on turns, and it's not going to miss the shuffle that much. Like, this engine is so weak, the deck is so bad, that weak cards like merchant ship start to look good. But contraband is still bad. I just don't need what it's giving me. Like, cheap gold is not that good here. Like, it doesn't matter. You've got better cards that you can play. Uh, so I'm having to get some courtyards in case we, like, get terminal collision. It's fine. I want, like, two mountebanks, and then maybe I get a merchant ship or two. But I'm expecting that our decks are going to be terrible. I think you still get trading post anyway. Actually, yeah, what am I talking about? You definitely get trading post here. Even though it's a slow trasher, it's still going to be better. But actually, Mountebank feels better to me. I think Mountebank is stronger than Trading Post. Like, if you spend time trying to build up with Trading Post, like, Mountebank's just going to bury you anyway. Like, you really sort of need to get started on the Mountebanks uh, because it just, like, rapidly undoes the benefit you're getting from Trading Post. It gives you two junk cards every time. And you need to really... If your opponent's going trading post, you can just play more mountebanks than them early on. And then when they do get mountebank, they can't play it as often as you. So, yeah, so this is just like a mountebank game, basically. It completely dominates this game, and there's nothing to do except mountebank. And so contraband's not even very good here, honestly. Um, what sort of things will you be buying? Well, after a certain point, we just want money, right? And contraband is not great because when you do play it, like, you're not buying the victory cards that you want necessarily, so I think it's bad. But this is probably the closest kingdom to where you might actually buy contraband. There's just nothing really to do with it, so I would skip it still. There are just better fives, basically. Um, anyway, so yeah, contraband, as you can see, it was just awful in every single kingdom. 
uh, I very rarely bought contraband. I think in all the games that I have played, I've bought contraband like a single digit number of times. Like absolutely dire card this is. Um, is this the worst card in Prosperity? You know, it might be. I think it actually is. Uh, it's just it's unplayably bad, basically. Just utterly terrible. Why would you ever buy it? So yeah, that's that's it for contraband, really. Uh, thank you for watching, and I will see you next time. Goodbye.